Jesus. Hallelujah. On a wet, stormy night in Conroe, Texas. Don't forget, pray for the missions conference. Pray for uh, Miss Sharon. Her uh, uh, ex-husband uh, passed away earlier today. So pray for her. She usually sits in the back. And um, amen and, and pray for them. Uh, you can have a seat now. Father, help us this tonight, I pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen, amen. You can have a seat. In Galatians chapter number 1, we find out that Paul got saved. He went to Arabia, verse 17, for three years, verse 18. He comes back to Jerusalem. He talks for a while with uh, Peter and with James, and they talk a while about the Lord, and then he gets to preaching. He doesn't see him again until chapter number 2, and that's verse 14. I mean, the first verse, it's 14 years have gone by. Well, that's 17 years. Some of you are not even 17 years old. Amen. And uh, he has started the church of Galatia. Peter has come to help. But Peter got persuaded by the Jews when they showed up. Amen. And all of a sudden, Jan uh, the Lord, I mean, uh, Paul has to get in Peter's face. In verse 11, chapter number 2, I withstood him to the face because he was to blame. What was he to blame for? He was being two-faced. He's acting one way here and one way over there, and he was being two-faced. So when the Jews showed up, he said, no pork chop, no bacon, no, you know, we're going to follow the law, and we're going to do the customs just like the traditional Jewish uh, Christians do. And so Paul said, yeah, 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 you, you know, we ain't doing that in this church. You're not bringing the law over here. These are a bunch of heathens. He even tells them they were a bunch of heathens. That's you. Amen. Before you got saved, you was a heathen. A amen. You acted like a heathen. You talked like a heathen. You dressed like a heathen. Amen. And then chapter number three, we then see in verse number one, he calls them, Foolish. Then he tells them, you're under a spell. You're bewitched. Verse number three, he calls them again. Foolish. Why? Because they want to now follow the law. They don't know what's right, what's wrong, what to do, what not to do. They're all confused. They are, the Jews have said, you got to start following the Old Testament. All right, now Sunday I'm probably going to preach on this again, so you're getting a double dose of the same thing I'm fixing to preach on, all right? There's a, there's a verse in the book of Proverbs where it talks about the blueness of the womb. You remember that? Well, this is 2014, okay? Jesus said that he said the only verse that he talks about when he talks to children, he, he talks to the fathers and he says, now dad, I don't want you to discourage the children. Right. Because they got to serve God too, so don't be discouraging them. All right? How, how, do you, how can you discourage a child? You can do it a bunch of ways, amen? You can get on to them too much, you can give them too much freedom. There's all kinds of ways of discouraging a child. Does that make any sense? Amen? Now, if you're going to do the Old Testament, which is the blueness, let me say this, don't do it during the school year because it's 2014, you're going to prison. Don't do it during summer school. You know why? You're going to prison. All right? Don't do it when you send your kids over to your in-laws because they're going to see that blue wound and they're going to say, eh, you're going to prison. So there is a very small window if you must go back to the Old Testament to discipline your children of the blueness of the wound? 
Now, I don't know about you, but if you beat the devil out of me, so I turned it down a little bit, amen, amen. If you beat the devil out of me, you know, you'd probably get the wrong reaction, amen. I don't know about, you know, uh, you know, I'm not really sure if that's going to discourage me or not, amen, if that's supposed to be an encouragement. But this is in happy days. You're not in happy days. This is not 1950. Amen. Everybody's got to be politically correct. They don't know what to do. A lot of churches, you know, they want to go back to the Old Testament, live in the Old Testament, and they kind of, it's like a buffet. We choose and pick what we want, and we leave the rest of the stuff out. And, and you're not in the Old Testament anymore. You're in the New Testament. Thank you. God bless you. I know you didn't like that at all. Amen. But that's still okay. Amen. You know, the only discipline the Lord talks about is don't be discouraging your children. And he always points to the dad. You know why? Because mom's always encouraging. Amen. She's encouraged. She'll hug you. Amen. She'll feed you. Amen. She'll give you... You know, you know, well, dad got on to you, you know, huh? Oh, come over here, baby. You know, it's going to be all right. Amen. You didn't like that. That's still the truth. Hallelujah. Amen. So, all right. So, and then we went to the surprise verse, which is verse number 28. When he says, there's not a Jew, there's not a Greek, there's not bond, there's not free, there's not male, there's not even female. We're all the same. You get to heaven. Uh, let me tell you, ain't no males, ain't no females. You're going to be made just like an angel. Thank you. Jesus even says it. It's in the New Testament. I've read the book. Hallelujah. Amen. I've read it. Amen. It's in there. It's just like ragu. Amen. It's in there. Amen. So there is none. Now, I understand, you know, the... the the male, the, you know, the, the, the father that's supposed to lead, the husband's supposed to lead. You know, you want pizza, you want Chinese. I've always used that because that's a good illustration. Hallelujah. A amen. You know, which one are we going to do? Well, we got, we, we got to do one, amen, one or the other. So you know what we always did? We went to the Chinese restaurant and bought McDonald's for the kids because they hated Chinese. They, I don't know why, amen, and, and all the other kids are going, I want that. So, uh, no, no. Uh, uh, yeah, but uh, uh, we, we enjoyed it. Now we're in chapter number four. So I'm not going to make it 16 verses. I can see this. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all. Uh, you know, those that are kings and still believe in kingdoms and having dictators and then they take over, amen, uh, becoming king. King David selected his next to be king. When, out of his sons he chose Solomon. Amen. But when Solomon was a little boy, he could not rule because he didn't know anything. Amen. So he was just like a servant. Amen. Sometimes the servants would even tell the kids, stop running. Hey, pay attention to me over here. Amen. Hey, thank you. Amen. You know, amen. So, but, but it's under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. When does he become in charge? When daddy says, I ain't doing this anymore. Right. It's your turn. You take over. Amen? Amen. Amen. And, and, and that's the way it's supposed to be. Hallelujah. Until then, you're supposed to sit, learn. Amen. Amen. Sit down, shut up, learn. Amen. And, 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 and Amen. Even so we, who's the we? That's the heathen Galatian church. Yeah. 
When we were children, we were in bondage of the elements of the world. A child needs its parents. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you why. Amen. You need someone to feed you, to wake you, to tell you to take a bath. Amen. Someone to tell you to put clothes on. You need a mother that will wash clothes because you don't, amen, you'd have no idea how to wash your clothes. Amen. As you get older, you want more responsibilities. You will eventually get a car. When you finally become a teenager and you get a car, you must check the oil. You must check if the tires have air. Amen. You are growing up. Amen. Someone has to teach you that. You need a tune-up. Amen. So when I finally left home, had a car, lived by myself, you know what I did? my laundry home back to mom. Amen. Thank you. Uh, hallelujah. A amen. amen. Ate a lot of pizza. A a went out to eat a lot. A a amen. <laughs> so I didn't like that, you know. Uh, so I'd rather be back at the house. But there's a time. There's a time that you have to learn to sit down even though you are the heir, even though one day you're going to take over, amen, you, you got to learn to, you got to learn. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth the son made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoptions of sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into what? Your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Now somewhere inside of you, if you're saved, there ought to be somewhere deep down when you need God, you, there ought to be some place that says, God, would you help me? Would you help my friend? Amen. Would you help, amen, Miss Sandy Bolton or amen's got can? Would you help her, amen? Hallelujah, amen. I, I, I prayed. I don't know how many times my heart broke this week just thinking about, uh, about that, that old Mississippi cowboy, amen, needing his wife. I'm thinking, you know, Lord, would you help him, amen? I mean, uh, uh, he, he could use he could use it, a, a, amen. And a, thank you, amen. You didn't like that? That's all right. But there ought to be, if you're saved, it ought to be inside of you amen. that you cry out to God, that you're crying out to God, saying, God, uh, I, I need some help. My community needs some help. My family needs some help. My dad needs some help. Amen. Uh, there ought to be something inside of you that cries out. Now, if you don't have a burden for somebody, well, then, then it, 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 it's hard to believe you're saved. There ought to be some weeping for others. Now, if you don't ever weep for anybody else, you're just not saved. It's just that simple. Amen. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son. What's happened? Amen. Amen. You're not a servant, you're a son. A son. A son of who? And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Yes. You're God's son. When you got saved, born again, you became his son. How be it then, when we were knew not God, ye did service unto them which by nature are no gods. Amen. I was a forgot how long. Amen. But now after that you have known God, or rather are known of God. Why? Because you're saved. You're his son. How turn you again to the weak and beggarly elements where until you desire again to be in bondage? 
What does that mean? Why are you going back to the Old Testament? Why are you going back to all that stuff that was back there? Is it good to read? Yes, it's good to read. Is it inspired word of God? Yes, it's inspired word of God. Do I believe every word? Yes, I do. Amen? But, I, you know, we're not going to stone somebody just because they're picking up sticks on Sunday. Yeah, right. Amen. I'm a, amen. Right, amen. We're, under, we're not under the law. We're under grace. How come it's always amazed me? Everybody, everybody wants grace for them, but when someone else messes up, all of a sudden our grace is ended. All of a sudden we say, "Well, no grace for you, no grace for you, no grace for you, no grace for you." You know, you cross the line, you cross the line. Well, where's the line? And, and who made you the judge? Amen. Who made you the judge that said, you, "Amen"? Amen. I thought God was in charge. Now, there's, there are rules and regulations. Amen. Paul goes to the church. He talked about that. He talked about those uh, in 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians. We went through those. Right. You remember some of the laws? Amen. Yeah. Uh, you weren't even supposed to eat with, with a certain type of people. Right. You weren't even supposed to associate with them. Right. Don't be eating with fornicators. That's one of them. Right. Don't eat with them. Why? So they can get right. So they can get back in church. So they can get back on their knees and say, I'm sorry, I want to get right. Okay. There you go. Amen. No trouble. Amen. Now those that continue fellowship and what you've done is you've broken the, you know, now you've broken the rules and regulations of the New Testament, not the Old Testament. Paul's talking to the Galatians and he's saying, you guys are going all the way back over there and putting stuff on you that, that God really don't care about. Amen. He just don't care about. Amen. Amen. And, and, and so what he's telling them is, you have not been taught yet because you're doing the same thing again. He, he's already got on to them once. Amen. In, in chapter number 3, he's continuing, amen, uh, he's continuing talking to them like they're little children. Why? Because they're little children. They haven't grown up yet. They're not spiritually grown up. They may be in a grown-up body, but that doesn't mean they are spiritually grown up. He said, God knows you if you're saved. Why do you, why do you want to go back to the beggarly elements? Why are you acting like a beggar? Why are you begging God? Lord, would you, you know. He's your heavenly father. My son does not come and beg. Amen. My daughter does not come and beg. They come to me and say, Dad, can we have pizza tonight? They're not ashamed. Please, Father. Can we have a slice of cheese pizza, please? Pretty please. No, I don't do that. Amen. And why do you do that in your prayers? When, when did you become so pious? Amen. I, I'm just telling you, if your father, if he's your father, you should be able to go to. Your, yeah, I know he's God. Amen. I know he's important, but he's also your father. He says, it's just like your father, you got to be taught. He said, you got to be taught. He said, look, look, look what you guys are doing. You're observing days and months and times and years. Why are you doing this? Because they did it in the Old Testament. They observed times and days and all. Amen. Amen. He said, why are you guys doing this? Look, notice what he says in verse 11. I'm afraid of you. He's talking to the church. He said, I'm scared of this church. I am afraid of you, least I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. Have I been up here preaching for 14 years? 
is what Paul's saying. Remember the 14 years? Have I been up here for 14 years and you ain't learned nothing yet? You, you're still trying to keep the law. You're still trying to make others keep the law. He said, do you believe in standards and convictions? Yeah, I think you ought to have some. Amen. Paul's fixing to talk about this in a minute. But at the same time, Paul's saying, you're going well back to the Old Testament and you're doing what the Jews are doing. Amen. So you're going to, you know, have burnt offerings and you're going to do all this other stuff. Christ died. It's over, man. All you got to do is ask Jesus to save you. Amen. Ask him to forgive you of your sins. That's it. Amen. Then your past sins are forgiven. Your present sins are forgiven. Your future sins are forgiven. All your sins have been washed clean. You say, then why do we got to ask God to forgive us again so that you can have fellowship with God? So that you won't be ashamed. A good father. I said a good father. A good father never gives up on his children. No matter what they do. No matter what they become. I said a good daddy does not give up on his children. He never quits. Amen. They're his children. He's going to keep praying for them. He may not go out there like the prodigal. When the prodigal took off, he didn't go after him. He stayed right there at the house. He said, well, I'll wait for you, boy. When you get full of it. Amen. That's, that's a picture of the church. Amen. When you, you go ahead and leave. Go ahead. Go out there. Go play in the mud if you want to. Amen. When you finally finish, you want to play with the pigs. Amen. You want to share your food with the pig? That's fine with me. When you get plenty full of it, come on back. I'll be right here on the porch. Every day he waited, every day he cried for his boy. You cannot make me believe any other, any other way. Amen, he sat on that, on, that, on that porch and he would weep and say, Lord, it looks like it's getting dark again. Help my boy. Yeah. Don't let him die tonight, Lord. Don't let them get killed. Don't let them overdose. Don't let them. Don't let them. God, don't let them get. Don't let them die. Not tonight. Amen. Would you bring them home tomorrow? See, that's what a good father does. Amen. And you want to go back into bondage? You want to go back out there? Why would you want to go back out there? Why would you want to leave church? So I'm afraid of you. Maybe everything I've done trying to be a blessing to this church has been in vain. Maybe everything I've done and uh, all the preaching and all the praying and everything else I've done and, and ask God to help this church and, and maybe it's all in vain. I'm, he said, I'm, I'm almost afraid of looking at you. The way you turned out, I, he said, you want to go back to that? Right. Why do you want to go back? Why would you want to? You know why people do stuff like that? Religious people. So they can seem better than you. Anybody that has more convictions than you is a legalist, and everybody that has less convictions than you, amen, uh, is backslid. How about that? Who made you the judge? Who made you the judge? I'm afraid of you. 
Brethren, I beseech you, be as I am, for I am as ye are. You have not injured me at all. He said, what is he talking about? He said, they've been talking about Paul. You know, Paul, he lets pretty much anything go around here, you know, and I just, you know, I just, I don't I don't like the way, you know, that guy's saying, you know, I don't, I don't care for that one. I don't like the way that this guy, you know, preach. I don't like the way this this woman dressed, and I don't like the way that this guy, you know, has his hair cut, and, you know, I, I just, uh, you know, and, oh, shut up, amen. amen. That's the way Paul told him, amen. Hey, hey, he said, you ain't injured me. He said, you think you're the first one to ever talk bad about me? He said, stand in line. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He ain't injured me. He said, be just like me. He said, why? That was their example. You know how through in the infirmities of the flesh I preached the gospel unto you at the first and my temptation was in my flesh, you despised not nor rejected, but received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. He said at the beginning, y'all was all for me. Yeah. You enjoyed the preaching. Yeah. But now because I'm not as legal as you are, legal minded, amen, wanting everything legal, and I don't observe the days and I don't observe the events and, uh, you know, because I don't go back to the Old Testament and live like a Jew. Now you want to talk bad about me? He said, I can take it. No big deal. What do I care? He said, what happened between the time when you first enjoyed my preaching and now you don't like it at all? What happened? What happened from the time that you used to like it to now that you don't like it? And my temptation was in my flesh, you despise not nor rejected, but receive me as an angel of God, even as Christ. He's talking about that uh, temptation. He's going to talk about it in just a second. Which is in the blessedness you spake of, for I bear the record that if I had been possible you would have plucked out your own eyes and have given them to me what is he saying he's saying he had cataracts he couldn't see he was almost blind he said if it was possible there was some of you that would have said preacher you need these eyes better than me i give you one of mine Another guy said, well, I'll give you one of mine. I'm willing, preacher, because I, I know you, 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 need to, you need to study. I know you need to, to see things. And I know right now, you know, everything's fuzzy. You, don't, you can't even see straight. And, and I, anybody else seeing this besides me? You would have plucked out your eyes. He said, you was that given. You was willing at one time to suffer that much. Amen. See, you've lost the joy of suffering. It is a privilege to suffer with the Lord. Did you know that? Yes. He only chooses those that are the very best. He only chooses those that can handle it. How about that? Amen. He said, well, I don't do much suffering. Well, talk to God about all that. But if you're going to stand behind a pulpit, if you're going to stand behind a pulpit, you are expected 
more. People expect more out of the preacher. If you're called to preach, they expect more out of you than anybody else. You don't just sit in a pew. Now, we expect you to lead in, bat- in combat. Mm-hmm. We expect you to be up there in the front lines when everybody else is going behind.